Hello, everyone. Step into a magical journey with us through vast fields where millions of deer embark on their journey of life and growth, step by step to become a precious source of velvet antlers. Imagine the sensation as you set foot in this land where the sunlight gently caresses the lush green meadows and the harmonious symphony of nature blends with the soft footsteps of the deer herds, painting a magnificent picture. Join us in the awe-inspiring exploration of these expansive landscapes, where the wonders of nature unfold at every turn. Deer have undergone a process of domestication for thousands of years, as the connection between humans and deer began during the period when humans transitioned from a hunter-gatherer lifestyle. The domestication process of deer has gradually given rise to deer species considered domesticated, exhibiting adaptability and a close relationship with humans. Raising deer serves various purposes, including meat production, antler harvesting, and deer fur, as well as maintaining breeding populations, promoting ecological tourism, and utilizing them in hunting activities. Under the skies of many countries around the world, the art of deer farming has thrived, particularly prominent in special locations such as New Zealand, Australia, the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, China, Russia, and several other European countries. These lands are not only destinations for modern agriculture, but also the foundation for prosperity and diversity in caring for and nurturing deer herds. Raising deer serves various purposes, such as meat production, antler harvesting, deer fur production, breeding, conservation-focused hunting tourism, and ecological tourism. New Zealand is the largest supplier of velvet from deer farms. There are approximately 1.2 million deer and around 3,000 farms with extensive areas dedicated to growing deer feed it creates a completely natural breeding environment do you see the beauty of these deer if yes please leave the number one otherwise if not feel free to leave the number zero Join me in exploring how to care for newborn deer until they mature for velvet harvesting. The gestation period for deer lasts from 195 to 205 days. In mid-spring, typically from May to June, is the suitable time for deer reproduction. Deer usually gives birth to only one fawn at a time, but there are cases where they may have twins or even triplets.
When first born, these young deer weigh only about 5 to 8 pounds. To camouflage their scent from potential predators, mother deer will lick the fluid on their newborn's bodies after giving birth, and the fawns will consume their own placenta. Deer are born with spotted fur, but they lose this coat after a few months. They rely on their mother's milk for the first few weeks of life before transitioning to solid food. A female deer will nurse her fawn four to five times a day for the first four months, even after they begin to nibble on grass. Young deer learn from their mothers which plants are safe to eat. Young deer grow rapidly. In just a few months, they can weigh up to 60 to 70 pounds. During this time, they'll start venturing out more on their own, but still stay close to their mothers for protection. Female deer often stay with the herd and their mothers throughout their lives unlike male deer who are more likely to venture alone or join a herd after they turn around two years old. However, on many farms, farmers often create separate areas for young deer, providing a stable and manageable environment. Additionally, they can regularly monitor their health status and, if necessary, provide medical care. Typically, the process of raising deer for velvet harvesting lasts from three to five years. During this period, deer are cared for, nourished, and monitored to ensure optimal growth. The antlers are covered by a soft velvet layer with blood vessels that supply nutrients for horn development. On average, a deer can yield from 100 to 300 kilograms of velvet, but this depends on the species and its size. Once the velvet reaches the desired size and quality, the deer will be harvested for velvet. To ensure the safety of both the deer and the handler, deer are gently restrained or anesthetized during the harvesting process. After antler removal, a substance called oatmeal powder is often applied to the cut area. 
Oatmeal powder has blood clotting and antibacterial properties, helping prevent infection and promoting healing. This helps minimize stress and prevent any potential injuries. Next, the deer velvet is boiled and dried to remove excess liquids and impurities, creating favorable conditions for quick and desired quality drying. Afterward, the deer velvet is hung or placed on racks to air dry naturally, and the drying time can range from a few weeks to several months, depending on the thickness of the velvet and environmental conditions. This process occurs in a well-ventilated and cool environment, avoiding direct sunlight. The deer velvet will be cut into small pieces, approximately half a millimeter thick. They will undergo another round of drying before being packaged and labeled to meet the customer's needs. A pair of deer velvet weighing around 800 grams, after processing, can yield approximately 250 grams of medicinal material. Deer velvet is a precious remedy that may support muscle strength enhancement, help lower blood pressure, boost heart contraction, promote mental well-being, and offer various other good benefits. It's used as a medicine in many countries worldwide. It enhances health and reinforces the immune system. Athletes seek it to improve strength and athletic performance. Its health benefit for joints alleviate discomfort and enhance flexibility. To ensure the optimal development of deer antlers for the upcoming harvest after velvet harvesting, deer need to be provided with a balanced and nutrient-rich diet to ensure quick recovery. The diet typically includes protein-rich and vitamin-rich foods to support the recovery process and promote overall health. The living environment of deer also needs to be safe and comfortable, including enough space for movement, clean drinking water, and protection from adverse weather conditions. The mushroom making process starts with preparing selective compost, which is the most challenging part of the mushroom growing process. This involves combining water, straw, chicken litter, 
and gypsum in three distinct steps to form the compost, also known as substrate. In the pre-wet process, the straw is thoroughly soaked to remove the hard, shiny layer from the wheat straw, making it more water absorbent and allowing easier access to the carbohydrates in the straw. During the premix, the chicken manure and chips are mixed into the straw and loaded into a large concrete bunker. The compost is then pasteurized to destroy unwanted fungi and pests that might steal nutrients from the good mushrooms. Finally, the colonized compost is transferred to the growing tunnels. Mushroom supplements are added as additional nutrients and a mixture of peat and sugar beet lime is added to the compost to form the top part of the casing. The casing layer has to be applied as evenly as possible and the beds should be watered once the compost is completely covered. Frequent watering must be done in the first five days. Next, let's continue with how Japanese people create millions of shiitake mushrooms. Shiitake mushrooms is one of the most popular and sought-after mushroom types in Japan. With its distinctive aroma and rich sweet flavor, shiitake mushroom is a highly valued food item in the market. The cultivation of shiitake mushrooms in Japan differs from other mushroom cultivation methods. Shiitake mushrooms are grown on long logs ranging from 90 to 120 centimeters. Before planting, these logs are drilled with holes and then mushroom spores are inserted into the holes. This is a cultivation technique that has been kept secret in Japan for nearly 1,000 years. The selection of wood for growing shiitake mushrooms is also crucial, with commonly used wood types including oak, red oak, and musunara. After planting, the logs are placed in a cool and shaded area or forest-free from chemical contamination. However, due to the shiitake mushrooms being a rare and precious type of mushroom, its cultivation in Japan is closely managed and only allowed in designated forest areas. This helps to protect natural resources and ensure the quality of the product. Shiitake mushroom is a valuable food item and part of Japanese culinary culture. With generations of experience in shiitake mushroom cultivation, the Japanese have developed unique and distinctive cultivation techniques. Additionally, Local residents in Japan can also forage for small amounts of shiitake mushrooms in forests like these. Growing mushrooms in greenhouses in Korea has been a developing agricultural activity in recent years. Growing mushrooms in greenhouses requires careful care, starting with preparing the mushroom source and planting materials. To create a mushroom spawn, growers use machinery to mix sawdust with wood chips and some specialized chemicals for mushroom cultivation. Then they use plastic bags about 60 to 70 centimeters long to hold the mushroom spawn. Once the mushroom spawn is ready, workers insert mushroom spores or mycelium into the holes on the spawn. The mushroom spawn is then neatly stacked on a rack for easy care. 
When the mushroom spawn has bonded into a solid mass like wood, workers remove the plastic bag layer and continuously provide moisture to help the mushroom sprout. This step requires meticulous care and must be performed correctly to ensure the speed and quality of mushroom growth. Finally, when the mushrooms have grown large enough, they are wrapped in a preservation film and taken to a care and harvesting facility. This process requires professionalism and high technical skill. However, when done correctly, it will bring many benefits to the growers and consumers. Mushrooms have long been known for their health benefits, and shiitake mushrooms, in particular, are a great source of antioxidants that protect cells from damage caused by free radicals in the body. In addition to their antioxidant properties, shiitake mushrooms also contain compounds that boost the immune system, helping the body fight off infections and diseases. Studies have shown that shiitake mushrooms may also help reduce the risk of heart disease thanks to their high levels of ergothionine and polysaccharides. These compounds can lower blood sugar and cholesterol levels, reducing the risk of developing heart disease. Shiitake mushrooms are also beneficial for digestion as they contain anti-inflammatory and antibacterial compounds that can reduce inflammation and protect the lining of the stomach. This can improve digestive function and alleviate symptoms of gastrointestinal disorders. Furthermore, shiitake mushrooms have been found to contain compounds that enhance brain function, improving memory and concentration. With all of these health benefits, it's easy to see why shiitake mushrooms are such a popular and healthy food choice. In this video, we have learned about the amazing benefits of mushrooms and how to grow and harvest them in some of the countries with the largest mushroom production in the world. The mushroom cultivation process not only provides us with delicious and nutritious mushrooms, but also contributes to protecting the environment and improving people's livelihoods. We sincerely thank you for watching the video and hope that our content has been helpful to you. Please continue to support us to receive more interesting and informative videos. This is our channel. This is the channel manager. This is the video editor, and this is the content creator. Hello everyone! Did you know that millions of people around the world are experiencing the softness of merino wool, a highly regarded material globally? But have you ever wondered how this fantastic product is created? Explore how they shear the wool from over 78 million sheep in Australia. Immerse yourself in the fascinating world of merino wool production in the factories. Every year, sheep around the world produce 2 to 3 million tons of wool, a material with outstanding properties. Wool is not only one of the most popular fabric choices globally, but it's also a symbol of softness and delicate curls. Not only does wool have wrinkle-resistant properties, but it also maintains its shape well, possesses excellent moisture absorption, and insulation capabilities. These characteristics make wool an ideal material for high-end fashion products such as sweaters and coats. 
With its natural resistance to odors and dirt, wool is easy to clean. Wool from sheep has been produced for centuries. Historians believe that humans began domesticating sheep for wool usage around 10,000 years ago. In 1797, England transferred 13 sheep to Australia, marking the beginning of the world's largest wool industry today. In Australia, sheep shearing has been taking place since the early 19th century when everything was done manually with shears and the strong sweat of Australian shearers. Today, they are assisted by electric machines, with over 78 million sheep in Australia requiring about 350 million kilograms of wool to fall on the floor of this shearing shed every year. This is a lengthy and delicate process. It begins with the production of raw materials, namely the breeding and management of sheep. In cold weather conditions, the sheep's wool grows rapidly and becomes thicker. The process of collecting wool from sheep continues with shearing, often performed by the shepherds themselves. However, on large farms, there's usually a specialized team for this task. Having knowledge and mastering the techniques is important to carry out the job efficiently and quickly without compromising the health of the animals. Fleece can also be quite hot, as you can imagine if you've ever worn a sweater in the summer. Therefore, shearing is an extremely necessary activity to prepare the sheep to cope with the hot summer weather. Shearing sheep is a labor-intensive task that demands skill. Sheep are usually sheared using electric clippers, similar to the ones you see at a hair salon. A skilled shearer will create a work of art, delicately cutting the entire fleece of the sheep without causing harm, completing the job in just about two minutes. With just an electric shearing machine, the head has a wide 96 mm comb finished with a sharp, movable blade, resembling a hair grooming tool, but with a crucial difference. The sheep shearing machine is powered by a robust motor connected by a tube to the handle. This design makes the handle lightweight and not hot to the touch, but with 18 sheeps per hour, the blade will quickly become blunt. To solve this problem, it's necessary to use a handheld blade sharpener and conduct regular inspections. Most importantly, the shearing process must be gentle 
with the goal of cutting as close and tight to the skin as possible to remove the entire fleece as a single layer, called the cloth on each sheep. There are several reasons why we need to pay attention to the sheep's skin. Firstly, shearing can cause unnecessary pain to the animal, which farmers aim to avoid. Secondly, wounds on the animal can inhibit the future growth of wool. Thirdly, this slows down the shearing process creating a less efficient procedure. After the wool is sheared, sheep are supplemented with various nutrients in their diet to ensure their health and promote the growth of their next coat. This directly contributes to the nutritional status and overall well-being of the sheep. Do you know how many sheep's wool a farmer can shear in a day? On a good day, an average shearer can shear wool from 140 to 160 sheep, with skilled individuals shearing between 160 to 200. They rely on a special harness attached to the shed ceiling to lean a part of their body down, allowing them to extend their working time to about two hours. Each sheep can produce from 1 to 3 pounds of thin wool and 2 to 3 pounds of thick wool. This depends on the specific characteristics of the coat. After obtaining wool from the sheep, the process of sorting and classifying takes place. Once the shearer completes shearing a sheep, the wool collection team begins their task, focusing on gathering and preparing the wool for shipment. To classify unwanted dead skin and short wool segments, workers apply specialized measures during the sorting process. Would you like to explore the details of their wool sorting process? A commonly applied solution is to place the wool, with the underside facing up, on a specially designed table with wooden slats about 4 centimeters wide. The spacing between the slats helps minimize waste falling to the floor as much as possible, while still keeping the edges of the wool containing minimal dust and sweat. Don't forget to grab a cup of tea to stay refreshed and leave a comment number one to let me know you're still following along with this video. After being sorted, wool may contain dirt, natural oils, and other pollutants that need to be removed for clean wool before the dyeing process. Workers move the wool through a cleaning production line to ensure the final material is pristine before entering the dyeing stage. Factories receive around 8,000 pounds of freshly sheared wool from all over the world every day. And the wool is compressed before being delivered to the factory.
The quality of wool is primarily determined by the fineness of the fibers. Finer and softer fibers are often of higher quality and are used to produce premium products like merino wool clothing. Thick fibers may be utilized for coarser applications and industrial purposes such as carpet manufacturing. Right from the beginning, when a new batch of wool arrives, the first process that workers undertake is the dyeing process. They use one of the thousands of different shades available to create innovative wool fibers during fabric production. Workers load 150 pounds of fabric into a one and a half meter long steel basket where this hydraulic press machine utilizes pressure and water to compress it. Compressing the wool helps them dye larger quantities at once. A fast spinning cycle removes most of the water but the recently dyed wool remains quite damp. Therefore, it is transferred to a dryer, a massive microwave oven used to eliminate the remaining moisture from the wool. As the wool is heated in the microwave, the water evaporates and is sucked out by an internal vacuum system. To become yarn, it needs to be drafted, and this occurs in the spinning machine. The wool passes through over 100 different sized rollers, essentially like making hair. Each roller of the spinning machine covered with thousands of small metal wires. Would you like to explore the process of producing woolen products from sheep's wool? Leave a comment and don't forget to check out our latest video on our channel for a more detailed look. Let's embark on this adventure together, where patience and dedication will be rewarded with sweet and delightful bananas. We will go through each magical stage of the banana growing process. From nurturing young plants until they are fully grown, to carefully providing each ripe banana with the nutrients it needs. Discover the secrets and distinct farming techniques that allow us to experience the joys and challenges of being true gardeners. After planting the young shoots into the soil, they are watered regularly so that the roots thrive. As the roots grow stronger, watering is gradually reduced. Did you know that grass cutting in a banana plantation is one of the crucial tasks that can significantly impact the crop's productivity? Trimming the grass not only keeps the banana plantation tidy, but also helps prevent pests and insects. An open and grass-free area reduces the breeding grounds for pests, minimizing the risk of infections. So step into this green and refreshing space and share the joy with the farmers as their banana trees thrive and yield sweet, delightful fruits. At the Dizen family's banana farm, the banana production process is carried out professionally and systematically.
The careful care of the plants begins with selecting suitable young trees, protecting them from pests, and providing meticulous fertilization. Unnecessary plants are removed to focus on high potential follower plants. After about nine months, the bananas ripen to a luscious hue, preparing for a careful harvesting process. Bagging the bananas helps shield them from insects and unpredictable weather conditions. Lastly, the pruning and nurturing of both parent and follower plants are done carefully to ensure sustainable growth. With these procedures, Dyson's Banana Farm not only achieves high yields, but also produces top quality bananas that meet market demands. Cutting flowers from banana plants plays a crucial role and significantly affects the harvest yield. It is essential to cut the flowers correctly and carefully to ensure robust banana development. If you perform early flower cutting, you will harvest larger and tastier bananas. An important step is making clean cuts a few inches below the fruit cluster. This creates favorable conditions for banana growth and efficiently allows the plant to transfer energy to the fruit. Through precise flower cutting, banana plants improve their load-bearing capacity and provide better nutrition for subsequent fruit clusters. Now let's join us in the most anticipated moments of today, banana harvesting. We are now at the heart of the harvest in Machala, Ecuador, where bananas are grown with love and care. The quantity of bananas here cannot be found anywhere else in the world. This South American country is the number one banana exporter globally. Did you know that Ecuador exports 8 million boxes of bananas every week, equivalent to 416 million containers per year? These bananas are harvested from vast plantations stretching over 400 km from the south to the north of the country. Harvesting, processing and transporting these bananas demand careful and dedicated work. The banana harvesting process begins by cutting each bunch from the tree and placing them on cables. Then, these bunches are taken to processing plants where they are cleaned and packaged into high-quality banana boxes ready for export worldwide. We have witnessed firsthand the heroic workers toiling in these fields. They care for each banana plant with dedication and precision. Each banana plant bears fruit only once and is then replaced by a new sucker plant. How do you feel about this impressive cable car transportation? Please leave your thoughts for us to know. Not just the fruit, but also from the banana plant stem, one can create unique handmade items. 
Let's explore with us how they can craft these amazing products. With many years of experience in the industry, Abaca Ecuador has become one of the leading entities in producing and exporting high-quality banana fibers, not only within the country but also in the international market. They specialize in the procurement, selection and processing of banana fibers, renowned for their durability, flexibility and resilience, making them a valuable resource for various applications. Their team of experts ensures meticulous selection of the finest and strongest fibers, ensuring that the final products meet the strictest international standards. When woven together, fibers from banana plant stems to create a strong and versatile raw material widely used in various industries. Not limited to industrial applications, banana fibers also find their place in handmade and traditional products. Many handicrafts such as bags, rugs and hats are crafted from natural banana fibers adding a unique aesthetic and artistic value. Utilizing banana resources in a sustainable manner also helps protect the environment and ensures a continued supply for the future. Do you know what else can be made from these banana fibers? That's right, they can also be used to make paper. The remaining parts of the banana stem, after extracting the liquid, are dried completely and then used to produce handmade banana paper. This is the last leg of this journey. Do you like snacks? Have you ever wondered how to make delicious crispy fried bananas? At the Platanillos factory, the production process is meticulous and delicate. The bananas are carefully selected, cleaned, and sliced into thin, even pieces. They are then deep fried at precisely controlled temperatures, creating fried banana pieces that are golden, crispy, and naturally flavored. What sets Platanillos apart is its commitment to use no preservatives or artificial colors, which ensures that each potato chip retains the natural flavor and nutrition of the banana. Their products are truly a fun and nutritious treat for the whole family. Not only serving the domestic demand, Platanillos also exports its attractive fried bananas to the international market. The combination of top quality and great taste has earned them the trust of their customers and expanded their presence in the global market. Maybe I should rush to the store and grab some of these fried bananas right away. In a suburban bakery, the owner found a new machine called the Koenig KKM. 
It is a modern machine that can produce different types of bread in just a few minutes. Bakery owner Anna always wanted a tool to help her increase professionalism and productivity in the bread production process. When she learned about this wonderful machine, she did not hesitate to invest in it and improve the quality of her bread. Thanks to Koen KKM, Anna has been able to create amazing sandwiches like never before. Not only that, her work also becomes much easier and faster, being able to produce large quantities of bread quickly and efficiently. Her bakery became a favorite destination for many customers. Before your eyes, this is one of the fabulous creations of the Koenig Corporation, called the Multi-Purpose Integrated PU Oven. This is one of the unique products in baking today. Designed for baking bread, muffins, pizza, and many other baked products, the Koenig PU Integral Oven can automatically adjust the cooking temperature and time to ensure uniform product quality. The machine can also change the humidity during cooking, making the product crispy and soft. The machine has an intelligent control system and can store different cooking programs to increase production efficiency and reduce the time to change cooking modes. Modern machines are crucial in helping the food processing industry develop and improve product quality. They increase production efficiency, reduce costs, and ensure food safety, significantly benefiting both businesses and consumers. If you enjoy this video, please like, share, and subscribe to continue following The Engine. Thank you! Have you ever seen a modern ketchup production line like this? The ketchup production process at the Sica plant in 2015 began with selecting the freshest and best tomatoes from local farms. Once cleaned, only the highest quality tomatoes can pass rigorous factory testing to enter the first stage of ketchup production. They are then steamed and peeled. The seasoning process is also done on modern equipment to ensure accuracy and uniformity. The ketchup will be cooked in the steamer at the correct temperature and cooking time to ensure optimal consistency and consistency. Saika Factory 2015 is one of the largest ketchup producers and is recognized as one of the best quality ketchup producers to date. Frontmatech's ERA dual robotic saw is a high-tech equipment in the food industry. With a unique design, the machine can combine two industrial robots with the same controller so that the robot arms act as a single machine. The machine is designed for cutting and slicing meat with high precision, which increases production productivity and reduces labor costs. The features and performance of the ERA dual robotic saws have made Frontmatech one of the leading companies in manufacturing and supplying automated equipment in the food industry. Do you know what this machine is doing?
The AutoLine API 8 inkjet printer is a high quality printing device in the food manufacturing and packaging industry. With this machine, printing and managing product information becomes more accessible, meeting the production needs of food businesses. Have you heard of Multivax Automation Solution? It is a multinational company specializing in the production and development of automation solutions in the food industry, especially in the field of packaging and handling. One of the packaging automation solutions of this famous corporation is the MAP Automatic Packaging System. This system allows the product to be air packed with a customized gas composition to protect the product from oxidation, extend shelf life, and preserve the product's flavor and quality. This system works fully automatically, from putting the product on the conveyor, packing, sealing, and printing the batch number of the product. Packing parameters can be adjusted easily through the computer interface. With this production line, everything is easy. And here is the Multivac R685 Deep Draw Packaging Machine. It is an efficient and time-saving packaging solution for mass production businesses. With its new design, this packer can handle above-average wide format plastic films, facilitating exceptional bulk production with a capacity of up to 480 packs per minute. With the ability to pack quickly and accurately, this machine can be used to pack a wide range of products, including meat, cheese, medical goods, sterile goods, industrial goods, and consumer goods. Use. It provides professional packaging solutions for mass production businesses, saving time and productivity. Nortura is one of the largest food producers in Norway, with the goal of producing eggs and meat throughout the country. To ensure the best quality and longevity of food, Nortura uses multivac semi-automatic packaging lines to pack whole chickens or uncut poultry. With this line, they can pack their products in a short time. It is the best packaging solution for large food manufacturing enterprises like Nortura. If you want to stay updated and discover more about cutting edge food equipment and technology, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, The Engine, so you don't miss any videos. Thank you for accompanying us on our journey to discover the world of food technology. See you in the next videos. This is our channel. This is the channel manager. This is the video editor. And this is the content creator. Hello everyone. Have you ever wondered how people can export millions of cattle worldwide? Join me in exploring the remarkable advancements in modern transportation technology that they've used to accomplish this feat. Livestock farming, particularly cattle farming, plays a crucial and widespread role in the agricultural sector across many countries, meeting the demand for meat and dairy within communities. 
The cattle farming industry here is highly diverse, featuring various breeds serving different purposes, including meat, milk, Angus, and numerous other breeds. The livestock industry has experienced significant development due to human demand, particularly in livestock exchanges between farms or for exports to various countries. Farmers often opt for truck transportation when it comes to livestock, primarily due to its cost-effectiveness and the assurance of safety throughout the journey. Indeed, what you're witnessing is no mistake. It's a flying cow. This unconventional mode of transport involves airlifting the cow via a private plane, an out of the ordinary method in the world of livestock transportation. These double-decker trucks serve as one of the optimal methods for transporting cows, boasting spacious compartments capable of accommodating thousands of cows in a single journey. When exporting cattle to distant countries, sea transportation becomes the preferred choice. The cattle are first transported from the farm to the port via truck, typically in large containers, before being loaded onto the ship. During the voyage, provisions are made for the cattle to access dry grass and drinking water. Despite the duration of the journey, measures are taken to ensure the health and comfort of the cattle throughout the process. Managing the health and transportation of cattle demands careful consideration including providing adequate ventilation to help the animals maintain optimal health. Despite the seemingly confined space, large trucks are equipped with ventilation holes to ensure proper airflow for the cattle. During the journey to their destination, the cattle may need to remain in these compartments for several hours or even days necessitating provisions for their comfort and well-being. Sheep are valuable not only for their nutrient-rich meat, but also for their wool making them a significant export commodity in Australia. When transporting sheep overseas, ships are the primary mode of transportation. During this journey, ensuring the sheep have access to sufficient food and a comfortable environment is paramount to their well-being.
In the mid 20th century, the introduction of giant Brahmin cattle significantly impacted the United States livestock industry. These cattle, known for their large size and adaptability to warm and tropical climates, quickly became integral to the industry, particularly in states like Florida, Texas, and Louisiana. You know, marking cattle is an important part of the farming process. This not only helps farmers manage their herds effectively, but also serves as evidence of the long-standing existence of the farm. At Premier Ranch in South Florida, Brahmin cattle farms usually let the cattle roam freely in grassy fields during the morning hours. Here, they enjoy the warmth of the sun and graze on the lush grass at their leisure. Do you understand the intricacies of breeding this herd of cattle? To achieve optimal breeding quality and ensure the birth of healthy calves, farmers carefully select the most exceptional cattle. These chosen animals are then brought together in the same space to facilitate the mating process. During pregnancy, the mother cows undergo regular blood tests conducted by experienced veterinarians to detect any signs of abnormalities throughout the gestation period. Brahmin cattle have a longer gestation period compared to Bose Taurus cattle. Their gestation period can last up to 291 days. Brahmin cattle typically have average sizes among the cattle breeds found in the United States. Bulls usually weigh between 1,600 to 2,200 pounds while cows weigh between 1,000 to 1,400 pounds on average. Following the breeding process, Brahmin calves not only bond closely with their mothers during the early stages, but also rely on their mother's milk for nourishment until they reach adulthood, typically lasting from six to nine months. To ensure they receive optimal nutrition, farm owners supplement Brahmin cattle's diet with a variety of grains and corn kernels, ensuring their meals are nutritionally balanced. This practice supports their growth and development, ensuring they thrive robustly. Brahmin cows are renowned not just for their remarkable adaptability to tropical climates, 
but also for their gentle demeanor and ability to coexist harmoniously with various other animals. They play a vital role in the livestock sector, making substantial contributions to the production of high-quality beef. If you find these cows impressive, kindly leave a number one in the comment section. Every morning, prior to being let out into the vast fields, the cattle undergo health and quantity assessments using state-of-the-art equipment. This not only aids in early detection of any health issues, but also ensures they're in optimal condition before embarking on a new day. On average, each large cattle will consume approximately 2 to 3 percent of their body weight in feed. As evening descends, they are ushered back to the farm area to rest. Yet their day's sustenance doesn't end there. Brahmin cattle are treated to a blend of corn, cornmeal, and silage, vital nourishment that sustains their health and energy levels. To guarantee that all cattle on the farm receive adequate nutrients throughout the day, a steady supply of clean water is always available, considering their substantial water intake. At certain farms, proprietors opt to cook grains with water as a feeding method for their cattle. Are you familiar with this approach? It's a strategy that numerous farm owners have explored, and it's shown to be notably advantageous. Cattle tend to digest this concoction more readily promoting a more uniform daily consumption of food and water for each animal. Such a method streamlines the management of each cattle's daily food and water intake. When cattle reach the desired weight for meat processing, they are transported overseas to meet the demands of international markets. This transportation is typically conducted using specialized vehicles equipped with multiple compartments. These compartments ensure the safety and well-being of the cattle during their journey. After arriving at the airport, the cattle are given a resting period to ensure their comfort and prevent any potential issues. Following this, they're transferred to specialized containers on the plane to ensure their safety and prevent any possibility of escape during transportation. In addition to Brahmin cattle, the United States is home to approximately 5,300 wild bison. Each year, an estimated 31,000 bison are preserved nationwide. 
Yellowstone National Park, in particular, is renowned for harboring around 5,300 wild bison. After the mating period, each cow typically undergoes a 24-hour-long calving process. On average, the calves weigh over 55 pounds at birth. At these farms, the calves will live with their mothers for seven months before being separated. Around six months, the cattle undergo health checkups and vaccinations. They're placed in an iron cage to measure their weight and then receive vaccinations. Just imagine how many people it would take to restrain a cow without this cage. Every year in the United States, approximately 113,000 wild bison are born. According to updated statistics as of 2021, there are a total of 513 bison farms spread evenly across the country, with each farm varying in size. Here are some of the states with the largest population of wild bison in the United States, with the Dakotas standing out with 104 farms. Additionally, Nebraska ranks second on the list of states with the most wild bison farms, with about 23,000 bison. Every day, the farmers release them into the pasture so that they can freely graze. The calf will also feed alongside its mother, and all are protected by a fence surrounding the grazing area. Uzina Santa Derezina Sugarcane Breeding Center is a renowned and reliable establishment in the agricultural industry of Brazil. With over half a century of experience in researching and selecting sugarcane varieties, Uzina Santa Derezina has established a strong reputation in providing optimal and high-yielding sugarcane plants. The center emphasizes the application of advanced techniques and modern technologies in the process of creating sugarcane varieties, from selecting quality parent plants to propagation and monitoring the development of the offspring. A stringent quality control process ensures that only sugarcane plants capable of withstanding the environment and producing high quality sugar are developed and supplied to farmers. Let's explore the marvelous machines that have contributed to a high-yield sugarcane harvest. This is the powerful John Deere 8345R, 
combined with the grizzly Offset Agricon Solutions, a formidable duo in the realm of agriculture and farming solutions. The John Deere 8345R is a robust tractor, notably paired with the Grizzly Offset equipment, providing farmers with efficient tools to work on the fields. The Grizzly Offset plays a vital role in modern agriculture by cutting and preparing the land before planting. With its sturdy design and professional quality, it enhances work efficiency and saves time for farmers. When these two devices are combined, they form a powerful and efficient machinery, enabling farmers to carry out agricultural tasks swiftly and effectively. This intelligent combination in 